<laughs> Functional contextualism sounds like a big word. In simple terms, a hole in a sock could feel, um, could have a certain function in a, in a certain context and have a very different function in a different context. Behavioral science is the philosophical underpinning of it. Um, in terms of relational frame theories, what does it mean, relational framing? So we take this very much for granted. We take our ability to infer that Gary is older than Adam just because we know Adam is younger than Gary. But we weren't told that. When we're told that Adam is younger than Gary, we, we take it for granted that we, we know the other one as well. In fact, it goes further if you say that Don is younger than Gary. Are you Don? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we also take the, not just that Don is then older than Gary, if Gary is younger than Don, we don't just know that, we, we also know that Don is older than Adam, and Adam is younger than Don. This happens instantly. We take it for granted that that ability is why we can create all the technology that you see. We, this is magic, this is sorcery. This shouldn't work. <laughs> but we thought it up. That can only happen if we can do this. We, we have kind of we connect concepts to each other. Those are relational frames, and there's a variety of those, and how that works is actually fascinating. Um, so those are those are two kind of very important pillars of I, and I will get to the third one, and I would like to get there, and I would like to get there by inviting you to play a game with me. I invite you to be my therapist <laughs> for a short period of time, and I'll be a really prepared client. I will tell you what I hope for and what um, bothers me, and and then I'll invite you to kind of consider what it's like to 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 work with that. I'll tell you I'm a dad. I'm a dad. I'll tell you that I'm, oh, I look at all these dads who are active and they're kind of, I don't know, bond with their kids in the pool and throw their kids around and kids love it. I want to be that dad. I want to be an involved, active, fun dad. I have a phobia of water and right now I can't go anywhere near the pool. What would you do with me? Would you, would you throw me into the deep end? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I see you shaking your head, and I'm so glad. Because when I was growing up, that was the dominant theme. Flooding was called. <laughs> right? You won, because if you did, one, I'd stop trusting you. Two, you'd throw me back another 10 steps from the way. More likely than um, now, would you tell me what are his adventures? Would you lie to me and tell me there's nothing to be afraid of? You wouldn't. So I do need to be cautious around water. Very, because a lot of friends and family would. They would say, what are you worried about? Look how easy it is, and so on. Um, it's more afraid of you than you of it. I don't know, whatever people say about the water. <laughs> would you tell me to give up my dream? Would you tell me I shouldn't be this dad? It's not for me, I don't have the talent or whatever else. That sometimes we hear, you should choose the job that you're comfortable in and so on and so forth. No, you wouldn't. I'm really glad. I'll stick with you. Um, <laughs> I'll come back. So you probably ask me how this came about. And I probably have a story already prepared about maybe a time that I was a little kid and I'm like this beautiful, gorgeous creature. <laughs> okay, maybe not that cute. <laughs> I don't know. How would I know? All I have is uh, black and white smudges because Dad was excited about developing his own pictures. <laughs> I was told that I was chubby and cute, so um, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> probably more like this. I don't know. How about but I'd probably tell you about a time that maybe a coach or maybe my dad watched a documentary and uh, decided that kids are very comfortable underwater and had mom walking on him in the bathroom and he was holding my head under. Mm -hmm. True story. <laughs> Both. The coach as well. Because the coach thought it was a great thing to, to keep me out of the water again. But um, let's... If you, if you were my counselor, 
you probably do this and pursue with me. You're on this journey with me, not approaching me as an expert. That's interesting. And, and you'd probably tell me how good a learner I am. Because in that place where pain, fear, stress, shame maybe, and water came together, and I've taken something from this. But that's not enough to produce a problem. Because the vast majority of us will have gone through at least one traumatic event if we're civilians. Right? We talk about post traumatic growth. It's not enough to produce a phobia. Something else happens after that. And this, let's say, as a kid, I'm sitting in front of a, a TV watching a show, and there's a kid who just, I don't know, bomb dives into the pool. And I remember, I, I'm a good learner, right? And then I'd feel that distress. What would I feel? What, what, would I feel? what would that be like to watch this? Fear. I'd feel fear. Do I like it? No, no I don't. And what would my loving, caring parents do with the show? Turn it off. Turn it off. There, there, And I would feel what? Calm, <sighs> relief. Do I like relief? Yes. Now, notice in this micro scale, I've just been trained in something. I got punished for the water being in my world and rewarded for it being gone. Mm -hmm. Now this will happen on that micro scale again and again and again and again and again. Well, maybe I have brothers who will do this thing because they know I'm going to go, ah, and that's fun. And, you know, naughty brother. Good nigga. And I get trained for years. Now, um, thank you, B.F. Skinner. We can, <laughs> using that, we can train rats to hold uh, signs that uh, sort of advertise their services, liver pressing services. This, this is open conditions. You've all heard of B.F. Skinner and his box. Um, any animal you see today performing in circus or uh, anywhere else has been trained using shaping, using that principle. We don't so much punish, punish animals, we mainly reward them. And we produce desired outcomes. But we're not rats, we're not seals, we're not... I think sometimes uh, people think you know, throwing lollies in workshops, that's how you reward participation. Not necessarily, it could work if you were maybe 12 and it's chocolates, unless again, <laughs> uh, you see that. It, I guess um, we're not rats. And we are, in terms of what we do with our minds, incredibly intricate. I can predict 10 steps ahead how bad things are going to turn out. And if I say like the Chermside Library, but there is a swimming pool right next door and it's oozing distress, it's oozing this discomfort. I hate it. It's like a minefield of anxiety for me. Will I go to this library? And notice my world will start changing. And I might driving on Hamilton Road because it's the road where there's kind of standard. Remind, I can think it 10 steps ahead. Mm -hmm. And I say 10, it's actually a lot more. We have networks of networks of knowledge. It's incredible. And the kind of learner that we are, we get better and better and better at anything we do. And I've been moving away from water my whole life. And by the time you see me, I'm an expert at having no anxiety for water anywhere near me. As far as. So what would you do with me? You promise not to throw me into the deep. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> well, yes. I guess it's exploring what it is about your goal that is important to you. I want to be a dad who is fun, who is active, who is engaged, involved, and in the water. <laughs> so therefore, you want to be in the water, is I that? I want to be in the water. Oh, yeah. And then on an academic level, I'm probably judging myself like this, not tomorrow, right? But on a visceral level, it terrifies me. Yes. And so would you explore that terrifying experience? Would you want to do that? Mm. 
you're absolutely right. I will gently let myself feel to the terrifying experience and the suffering very gently. Because remember, if you pushed me, you'd throw me 10 steps back. Even if I felt like it's not my choice, I'd stop trusting you. Right? You're right. And we have plenty of support for it. Systematic desensitization of graded exposure is woven in practically everything that we call um, treatment approach. I guess humans are amazing learners. And you're right. As long as what I'm doing here is about being that engaged, involved, fun dad. I'll let you kind of, I don't know, and you wouldn't, how would you know where to start with me? You'd explore, you'd, you'd work with me, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll take me through an imagery of a safe place. I told you that I have maybe time I spent the summer at the grandparents' house with a school friend where I felt cool, calm, connected, safe. And you'd kind of take me through an imagery of where I, what I'm wearing, you know, it feels like to have the sun on me and the wind, and you notice know, the glistening thing inside, maybe what a whole night to top, back to the sun, <laughs> the birds, and the leaves, and you not know, what a whole night to top, back to the bits, right? It would take me through maybe just something in my mind when I come back. I'd probably tell you how surprised I am. Because I would have thought I'd lose it if you did something like this. Does that sound familiar? There's a myth that we have about how terrible things will be if we did approach it. Why? What's that myth doing there? Why do we have that in... Why would I need that in my mind? Come on! <laughs> why? What is it doing? What is its function? It's protecting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. So you have the same idea. Well. I guess in... And you would do this once, twice, three times, you'd show me pictures, and initially you'd be like, ah, 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 ah. Okay, take it off, take it off. <laughs> My God. But I do this once, twice, three times, a week later, it's a picture. Collab, moving pictures, web, right, and so on and so forth. Right? Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm.